greens as you can, including leafy greens. So I'm gonna begin with sort of backwards here because I'm putting a pie in the oven and um, I wanna get it in there. Now, why would I, if I'm talking about health, concentrate and put time into showing you a apple crisp? Well, because this has no sugar. It has no crust made of Crisco or butter, and it has whole foods that are plant-based. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna begin with, this is a honey crisp apple. I used one honey crisp. This is a Granny Smith. I used one Granny Smith. And the recipe calls for four cups. I went a little over but it was under with just two of these. And so I put a gala apple in as well. And so I, I have a little more than four cups of chopped apple. They were peeled, cored, sliced, an eighth of an inch thin. So I took each half once it was peeled and I cut it in half to core it. I took each half, cut it several ways this way and then thin sliced it this way so that we can get a really uniform mix of apples in here. Then I'm going to add some seasonings and I think I'll add seasonings before I even add the liquid. And the seasonings include vanilla powder. Now, why would I use vanilla powder? Well, vanilla powder is concentrated vanilla because they take those vanilla beans, scrape the seeds and there aren't that many seeds per pod dry them out, grind them. This is whole food, as opposed to uh, vanilla extract, which is an essence of vanilla and usually alcohol and other preservatives in it. This is really pricey, but it lasts a long, long time. Look on Amazon and you'll find it there or your favorite spice um, vendor. This is, um, well, the recipe calls for a quarter of a cup of raisins and I keep currants around. I love currants because they're so small that you get more per bite full. Um, I love raisins as well, but this has currants in it now. I'm gonna mix these up, sort of coat the apple, coat the, um, the currants with the spices. And the spices were, let me look at where I am here. Okay, the spices were cinnamon, nutmeg, oat flour to bind it all, and then this, the vanilla powder. And it could have been vanilla extract. Um, and that's noted on your recipe. And then I'm going to pour in some apple juice and you have a recipe and that tells you, um, oh, this was lemon juice and some apple juice. Why the oat flour? It'll help thicken the mixture just a little bit as the apples release their flavor and the lemon juice and the apple juice that is on there already um, sort of blend with it. I see a clump of currant here and I'm gonna break those apart. There we go. All right, so I have a pan a 10 inch pie pan, the recipe calls for a nine inch pie pan or um, square, uh, square pan. I just happen to have this one that I love because it has high sides and it'll work just fine. I'm pouring our sliced apples into it. Look at how many. They'll cook down, they will be delicious. Very, very flavorful. And then I'm gonna put a crispy crust. And the crispy crust is also whole foods. Now they also, the crust or the crust has the, the, the sweetness that people come to appreciate and really like in a pie. And I'll tell you what that sweetness is from. It's still a whole food. Um, I should keep my banging down to a minimum. So what do I put? Topping. And if you're wondering where to get the recipe, to have gotten this notice, you, you were um, sent a reminder or the notice, you also had a way of um, 
using the link on your email. If you scroll down to near the bottom of the email, and a lot of people miss that, you will see photos of the recipes and you'll also see a link to the recipes. And there. Uh, so if you haven't seen them yet, they're available to you. So the topping is rolled oats and I use gluten-free because I'm sensitive to gluten. I use gluten-free organic rolled oats. Why organic? They spray a lot of our grains. They spray them with a desiccant and, and um, Roundup glyphosate is a desiccant and I don't want that in my system. My microbiome doesn't know what to do with it and I don't want it to try to figure it out because Roundup uh, glyphosate was originally made as a antibiotic and I don't want anything killing my gut bugs. So I get organic when I use grains and I recommend you consider it. They're available in so many places um, and not much more than the um, non-organic. So I have rolled oats. I have either oat flour. And if you don't want to have to buy oat flour, you could take rolled oats, put it, I'm pointing to mine, put it in your high speed blender and blend it into a flour. Keep it separate. In other words, keep a, a container of it and use oat flour whenever you need a thickening flour. And so this, the um, recipe for the topping called for either oat flour or almond um, meal or almond flour. I went ahead and used the almond flour. Almonds have a lot of fat and that extra fat, there wasn't much of it. There was only what, um, quarter cup of the almond flour or the oat flour in this part of the recipe. And I wanted to use the almond, I'm gonna move these. Uh, I wanted to use the almond um, meal because that extra fat is going to kind of give it a, a bit of a mouthfeel that I, I know I'm gonna like. The recipe here for the topping called for apple pie spice, the vanilla powder or vanilla extract, and um, the almond flour. And then it called for apple juice. And I'm gonna show you how I keep apple juice around um, because I don't drink juices that way. That's sort of sugar water. I would prefer to eat my apples, but I had to buy some juice for this. And actually I didn't have to buy it because I had it. And I'll, I'll show you how I, store it um, in a way that makes sense when you have recipes that call for a bit of something and you don't want to waste it, show you what you can do. Now, I just put in the apple juice and I put in date paste. What is date paste? Date paste is whole dates that are soaked and then blended in a high-speed blender or in your food processor and um, made into a paste. Let me show you my date paste. I don't know if you can see this. See, it's, it's, it tastes like caramel and it's thick. And I make a pound of dates Therefore, it's more than a pound of date paste at a time. And again, I'll show you how I store that as well. So this one, I had used all of this. We had some company this weekend and they had the date paste with their oatmeal. They had the date paste to sweeten up some lemonade that I made and um, I needed to defrost a new one. Okay, so now I have a crumbly, this is really nice. I have a crumbly mixture of oats and date paste and apple pie spice. Actually, I'm cheating. I have pumpkin pie spice, which is slightly different than apple pie. I think the pumpkin has mace and maybe apple pie doesn't, but it's what I had. And it's so near that in terms of its, um, your, its autumn spiciness that I used it. All right. I'm gonna spoon this over. Don't worry about larger clumps of it. 
And don't worry about it being so clumpy because those clumps are where you're gonna get your crispiness as it browns. Let me get this out of here. If you want, when you make this and you enjoy it, you can make more topping. All right. I have an oven on called the Breville Hot Air Oven that's over to my side. And I'm crazy about this thing. So I'll tell you a little about it. I have a beautiful oven. Uh, it's funny because in a lot of my classes, I'll just aim the camera at the oven, but I don't want to lose my angles because it's, it's right here. It's gorgeous blue. It's like a... Um, well, sapphire blue inside of the, the enamel. It looks as new as when I bought it three years ago. Well, just about three years ago, I went whole food plant-based. And you know what I stopped doing in that oven? I stopped cooking meat. Meat messes up an oven in five minutes. When my son and his wife came to visit and they loved the hot air oven because you can air fry in it, you can bake in it, you can toast you can dehydrate, um, warm. I warm our plates before dinner in there if I'm not baking in it. I, I just use it constantly because it's small and it doesn't take up that much um, of our energy just to heat it up because it's just a little box. Um, he went home, bought one right away. And I think they're about 350, 375, something like that. You can get them at um, at Bed Bath and Beyond, and their twenty percent uh, discount will work if you buy it in the store. So look at this pretty pie, and this is going to go in the oven. And this is this little cute oven. I'm going to set it for thirty five minutes at three fifty. Okay, and then it just turns itself off. And I air fry in that. We had company, again, I mentioned that we had tacos and I heat my tacos in a aluminum pouch in that five tacos per pouch, 15 minutes at 350. Well, we had probably, I don't know, seven or eight of the taco shells left, the tortillas. I use an organic tortilla, meat rancho tortilla. And, um, but they would have been too dry to use again. I cut them into sixes, the whole stack, put it in the air fry tray, which comes with the oven. And I had these wonderful, um, not fried baked um, chips that we used later on with the leftover guacamole actually the next day. Okay, so that's our apple crisp. But to make this summertime, I'm gonna serve it with, ice cream, but not ice cream, because again, I eat no dairy, and I recommend you consider doing the same thing. And so I make my ice cream, uh, new name, nice cream. You'll hear a number of our very popular uh, whole food plant-based chefs like Chef AJ, who has proudly told everyone on her podcast that Dr. Dysinger is her um, lifestyle medical doctor. And she actually recommends to all of her, gosh, tens of thousands of followers that um, they consider a lifestyle medical doctor because that's one of the few ways you can go to a doctor with a malady and not be prescribed a pill and a procedure within the first 10 minutes. Our doctors want to take people off of pills and avoid procedures if they can. And, um, but Chef AJ is crazy about the, the, um, the um, Breville air fryer, but also she is one who convinced me that one of the best ways to have ice cream is called nice cream. And it's made with um, bananas. I'll show you what I mean. Sorry. 
So in that one, I freeze my bananas like this. I um, buy a bunch of bananas, wait for a number of them to go brown because they're very sweet when they go brown and black spotted and simply freeze them in the freezer bags, Ziploc freezer bags. And for this, I used four bananas that I sliced up. I could do this in my, um, the Vitamix, or I can do it in the Cuisinart. And I think it's a little easier when I have a bigger bowl like this. And I'm going to add one more time, actually I'll use this, some date paste, and the recipe is there for you. And you can, it, at the end of the recipe, it says adjust seasonings as you see fit. I'm also adding some more vanilla and some cinnamon. And if this weren't an apple pie, I would have added some other flavorings. For example, I'll show you when I'm about to serve this, when the meal is presented. Um, one that I made, my the family was here. We wanted something cool to go along with a brownie and the brownie was made with sweet potatoes and black beans and it was amazing. And we wanted some ice cream, to, an ice cream to go along with that. So I simply pulled some bananas out of the freezer, got out the food processor. This one's a Cuisinart. And I took a handful of frozen cherries and threw them in. It was wonderful with the brownie. And so I'll show you that. And I'm, I'm adding something to the recipe that's not there. And that is the option. And you have lots of options. Um, the option of adding nuts, if you like, and I love toasted nuts. And this is a little bit of almonds, toasted slivered almonds. So I'm gonna add a little bit and as needed actually of plant milk. What am I using? I'm using soy. Why not add some protein to my banana nice cream? Soy milk, and I use an organic with nothing but soybeans and water. This one's from Trader, jo uh, from Trader Joe's, but you can get them um, at other stores. And why not add what amounts to nine grams of protein for one cup of soy milk? Okay, what you have to do with this, you know, it's wonderful. The aroma of the cinnamon is wafting up. I'm going to use a little bit more milk. Don't put a lot of milk in to start because if it's too milky, what you'll end up with now um, when you're, you want sort of a soft serve but also later is a, a ultra frozen brick um, because the moisture, the, the milk will freeze hard. Eventually you're gonna see what looks like a, um, a soft serve. Just starting to do it. It takes a minute, but it's so inexpensive. Think of the cost of a banana, four bananas, and we're going to get a nice amount of soft serve. And because there's nothing in here other than the cinnamon and the banana, which some people don't even recognize immediately when they taste it. Um, and then I'm going to put in some, some almonds. Um, it goes well with the pie. If I put, if I put cherry um, in it the way we did before, I don't think it would be as complimentary with the apple crisp. Now we've got it. Uh, 
Oh, lovely. I'm going to use the same container that I can slide into the freezer that I got the bananas out of. And I'm going to add the nuts, mix them around to blend them. I love the crunch of nut on anything. Okay. Somebody said to me, we were talking today at a, a meeting and somebody was talking about wanting to um, be conscious about what um, that person was eating and what recommendations I may have that would make a difference. The first thing I do, if I put on a pound or two, is I cut back on the nuts, the seeds, and the avocado. I don't cut back on the other good food. The, we eat fat, um, at least when people like me don't use a lot of oil in our, um, in our cooking. I'm sorry, am I even on? Yes. And I don't, I use very little oil in the cooking because it's just concentrated fat and it is not as nutritious as food, 120 calories for a tablespoon of oil, which is processed and full of omega-6s. Boy, give me 120 calories of a fabulous huge apple or a pound of broccoli or um, things that fill me up and keep me full and satisfied and low me or load me with some really nourishing phytonutrients, phytochemicals, look at this. This is just like, and I told you to taste it and be sure it's what you like. I think I'll have to sacrifice and do that. Mm. Mm. That is really good. And I like the addition of nuts. So what I was gonna say is if you're currently um, working on reducing some weight, don't do a lot with nuts. Don't do a lot with seeds. I always have at least a tablespoon and a half of flax seeds a day. That's omega-3, but that's what I'll cut out. I'll use my salad dressings like today. The salad dressing you're going to see today has no seeds, no nuts, and it's still creamy and absolutely delicious and loaded with fiber and even loaded with protein. The main ingredient is going to surprise you. Okay. There. So I'm going to put this in the freezer. I could have served this right now over hot, crispy um, apple slices or apple pie slices, but I'm not going to do that. So I figured I'd get this in the freezer right now and let it get as hard as I can. All right, excuse me for a second. Okay, so what's next? I'm gonna go ahead and do the salad dressing because the best result you're going to get from salad dressing is when you make it and let it rest a while. That's the way it is with soups. That's the way it is with stews. It's also the way it is with a lot of sauces, including salad dressings. The flavors marry and they blend. Um, we don't have a lot of time to have that happen, but I might as well make it now so that that has some time to do that. Put this in the refrigerator. And so we're going to do the salad dressing and I'm using another cuisinart. Look at this little cutie. All right, and the ingredients I'm using for this include tahini. Now that is a seed and uh, tamari. That is soy sauce, but it's the Japanese soy sauce that is gluten-free. And I buy the 50% less sodium one. And we're using lemon juice and garlic and Dijon mustard and some nutritional yeast. And I'll talk about all of those. Okay. 
So, what is the main ingredient with this that I said would be so surprising? Beans. I've already rinsed and drained these beans. So don't think that you can open it up and pour them out of the can. You'll get all of the broth and you don't want that. So they're rinsed and drained cannellini beans or great northern beans. So the white kidney beans, cannellini beans, all of those have a very neutral, mm, a very neutral kind of creamy flavor and consistency. Now I'm going to add to that. Um, oh, I ran out to my yard just before we began and grabbed some basil and take a knife. I bought a $3 container of fresh basil that had the roots in it, put it in a pot outside that has a drip on it already because there were some cucumbers in that pot. The cucumbers have, have sort of worn themselves out. They're done, but I have this big basil plant and there's nothing like fresh basil. And part of it has gone to seed. And if you're growing basil and you cut off the seed heads, cut them off, tear them off, your plant will continue to produce better than when it goes to seed because when it goes to seed, it's kind of saying I'm done, I'm out of here. All right, so. I'm adding to this the basil. Oh, got to note this. I made an error. I apologize. And I hope this hasn't inconvenienced anybody yet. Um, on my recipe, the recipe I sent in for this meal, um, I included the lemon dressing, but I showed the amount of basil as one cup of basil. It's one quarter cup. And so what I just put in here was about one quarter cup of basil. If I put one cup, it would be as strong as a pesto. It'd be as thick as a, as a, a paste. You would not like it and you'd think I had a terrible taste. So please make a note to change your recipe. One quarter cup of basil. All right, so I'm adding tahini. What is tahini? Ground sesame seeds. You can buy it at most stores, probably any store, but I, I don't know if you're across the country, um, what the availability is. If you have a Trader Joe's, they carry it and they carry it very well priced, like $3.99 or $3.69 or something like that. I also use Dijon mustard, but I use the Dijon mustard that has the, uh, that's the grainy mustard. Dr. Furman, who Dr. Joel Furman, who promotes what he calls a nutritarian diet, talks about the value of, um, of broccoli sprouts, of broccoli, and the elements in those foods that are the sulforaphane that is so healthy. Well, if you cook your broccoli a little bit, it reduces the myrosinase, which is an enzyme that makes the sulforaphane uh, uh, assimilate. Well, the mustard seed has myrosinase, or doesn't have myrosinase, but the mustard seed will make that sulforaphane available. So I like the mustard seed, must, uh, or the, the mustards that have seeds in them. I like the way it looks. I love Dijon mustard, so I buy it with the seeds for that reason. I heard an interview that um, during which they asked a person who had a, a um, condiment store if their Dijon mustard uh, was um, heated to a degree that it would have killed that, um, the element in that that uh, works with the sulforaphane. And he said, yes, the regular Dijon mustards won't work. Okay, now I've got lemon juice, tahini, I mean tamari, and again, tamari is soy sauce. That's where I'm getting my sodium and a couple of tablespoons of nutritional yeast. If you're not familiar with nutritional yeast, you can buy it very well priced at just about any store. Trader Joe's has it for a few dollars a bag. I spend more for mine because mine is non-fortified. Non 
I recommend the fortified. That's where you're going to get a lot of your B vitamins um, and folic acid. But some people, myself included, if you have an MTHFR um, uh, genetic mutation, you can't uh, process, you can't use in your diet folic acid, only folate. Folate's in plants, folic acid is what's added when something is fortified, so I can't do that. Um, and I'm gonna recommend a tool, consider getting it. It's a zester. This recipe calls for lemon juice and zest. Now this is a big lemon I just pulled off of my tree. I'm not going to zest the whole thing, but that little bit of zest, when you zest, because the whole point of the zester is that it's just getting, it's telling me to turn it around. It's just getting the bright yellow. If, if I keep going, it'll go deeper and deeper and get the white pith, but I don't want the pith. The pith is a little bit um, bitter. I just want bits of the yellow. And I think that's as far as I'm gonna go. But when you have a zested citrus, in anything that you make, it's, it's absolutely marvelous. Okay, and then I'm going to add a half a cup of water. And that's it. Okay. I don't know, but Zoom quite often will quiet the sound of a motor. It's very smart. And if that's the case, you won't hear how high pitch the wine on this thing is. Now, whenever you make anything in the processor, it makes sense to blend it, get it off the sides at least once and see if anything is stuck to the, the, um, the blade carriage. Okay. I want this to be very, very smooth and the beans to be, um, well, uh, um, I was gonna say homogenized, but that's the, well, that's the wrong word. Well, just bend it. Up. Okay, that's it. I'm going to make my oven happy by turning this around. Actually, it doesn't know I'm turning it around. It just knows I've opened the door, figures I've turned it around. If it annoys you enough, you do it. All right. And that's just for even cooking. Okay. I use the bell jars. So almost 16 ounces. I think they're about 14 ounces. And so this is a high protein, high fiber, nutritious dressing. You're getting, and, and you can take for granted the basil in here, but you're getting leafy greens. All of the seasoning kinds of greens like cilantro and parsley and basil. Their flavors are especially strong because they have especially strong phytochemicals. And therefore, you're getting especially strong phytonutrients. So I'm going to put this here and get it ready for later for our salad. And that, oh shoot, the lemon, the, um, Spoon sunk way down in there. There we go, that's okay. All right, so what's next? Well, something I'm gonna put in the salad. And that is going to be a roasted corn and black bean salad. We're gonna to end today with a big chopped salad, but on top of the salad, 
we're going to have a number of um, a, a variety of things. And that's the part that changes every day. The greens, at least in my case, stay pretty much the same. But what goes on top just comes out of the refrigerator, whatever I happen to have. And so I'm going to make this and I'm going to have this for a while. And that'll go on top of my salads for, for days, actually. I left it in the refrigerator because I wanted it, all of the ingredients to be nice and cold. And this is called the roasted corn and black bean salad. I took a shortcut. And if you were here eating this, you are my company tonight, and I wanted to impress you, I wouldn't have taken the shortcut. Uh, and what I mean by that is when I first tasted this, this recipe is from a friend, Susan Sims who um, now lives in, I believe, Sacramento, but she and her husband had a tree health service that they actually still have in Riverside Sims Tree Health. And um, I went to, she was a master gardener. I became a master gardener in 98, certified by the university, and she was too. And we did events on her five acre fabulous piece of property. And she served this at one of the meals and I loved it. And well, gosh, 98, that's a long, long time ago. That's more than 20 years ago um, that I had this. And so I wanted to share it with you today. But what made it so special was that she, they didn't have Trader Joe's who happened. Oh, man. <laughs> Shoot. The, when I picked this up, the lemon juice spilled out. But that's okay. I'll just pour it out of this container. It's clean. Um, they didn't have something as convenient as roasted corn from Trader Joe's. Um, what she did for this recipe was she, she, she um, cut the kernels off of the corn, raw corn kernels, put them in a pan. Now, she used oil. I would use one of my good non-toxic, uh, uh, non um, uh, non-stick pans and I would have roasted them that way. And by roasting, I simply mean in a dry pan, you keep turning these kernels until they come out like this, where they're slightly blackened. And you get that extra flavor that way. Well, she did that with this fresh corn and she had a big bowl of this, absolutely fabulous. So the recipe calls for three cups of corn. This is just a little bit more inexpensive, already ready for you, black beans. And again, just like the cannellini beans, I turned these out into a strainer, rinse them, drain them, put them back in so that I could show you the can. And again, organic and, the, um, and BPA free as well. And that's the, I don't know that it's a petroleum product, but it's a, chemical that they use in cans that's really not supposed to be in our body. So I aim as often as I can for the BPA free cans. And you might be thinking, gosh, darn it. All of these things that I have to avoid and all these things I have to think about. Now I've got to be thinking about organic. Just eat the fruits and vegetables instead of eating uh, processed foods or massive amounts of animal product and don't worry about it unless you can get them easily and that fits in your budget. Um, I go as clean as I can with my food as well as my cosmetics. And so I choose to do that, but you don't have to. All right, so I have beans and I have corn. I have one medium cut up tomato. A quarter of a cup is called for in the recipe, but I love red onion as does my husband. So I have chopped red onion, a half a cup, but I put in more of chopped cilantro. And cilantro, just like basil, is that strongly flavored green that gives you a lot of nourishment. And look at this. I used the um, 
the zester. Oh, actually, I'll show you. Let me put this in. I'll show it to you first. Look at this. Can you see that? This is the green skin of a lime. And it is so pure and clean. And when you put this in here, along with lime juice, the flavor is just remarkable. And it's free. You have the lime anyway. You can see that I zested this one. I'll zest a little bit more right over this. And how did I do it where I was able to, when I didn't have this already ready? Uh, you can do it on a paper towel, but it sticks a little bit. So I just take off a piece of either parchment paper, little tiny one, or wax paper, zest it over that, and then you can fold it up and push it into your measuring cup or your storage container, or as I did, um, a little container that I could keep it in until I was ready. Also, I needed a quarter of a cup of lime juice. Let me say this wasn't lime juice, it was lime. And I came in a little short because I have a recommendation for you. When you're doing fresh limes and you're first and you're zesting and you're squeezing, zest first. Because once you squeeze it, you don't have the rigor on the skin to then withstand that zester without it sort of collapsing. So you zest it first, you get a naked little lime, and then you can squeeze it. And what I found when I did it the first time was that two of these limes, and limes are variable. You'll get the tiny little Mexican limes, you'll get the larger bear limes. This is one of my favorite tools because I can do it easily. And because I don't want to leave one bit of it, I squeeze it face down and then I kind of fold it in half on itself. Give me one second. It seems that she logged off. Hang on.
Sorry, she's coming back in right now. Uh-oh. Oh, is that you? Yeah, oh. we got you. Okay. Okay. Wow. Well, that was inconvenient. I'm sorry. Okay. So um, I don't remember what I was saying. Um, I don't remember what I was saying. Oh, about the, the line. So what I was showing you was the value of this little tool. And it's just a citrus zester. You can use it for lemons, you can use it for limes. And actually, one of my favorite flavors in this is the lime flavor. So even though now I'm going over the quarter cup that is recommended, that's one of the things about recipes. Always taste as you go along and know that whatever was noted isn't the way that you have to end the dish. You can add things that you like yourself. For example, this is, I'm now adding the little bit of spice, which includes cumin and I believe chili powder. Um, yeah, cumin and chili powder and a little bit of salt. And the salt is optional. All right, I'm gonna taste it, see what I think and Mm. Oh, well, wow. you've got to try this recipe. This is even wonderful with the frozen corn. But if you really want to treat yourself, cut them off the, the ear. It's just a lot more work. But the, the lime, the lime zest, the corn, the tomato, the cumin and chili, fabulous. Okay, I'm going to leave this here because now we're building our salad. All right. Now, finally, let me explain to you what I was talking about when I said, I'll show you a way to keep things. I mentioned that I use dates to make date paste, right? Make a pound at a time of dates into date paste. I buy a container of applesauce and I only need a half a cup of applesauce to make my corn, um, wonderful whole grain corn muffins. And if you want to look at my um, recipes and some of the ones that are noted on your recipe as potential protein sources for your mixed salad, things that you can make tacos out of, lettuce wraps, um, burrito fillers like this, uh, look at nansimonson.com, N-A-N-S-I-M-O-N-S-E-N.com. And you'll see a number of these recipes. The date paste is on there. And the, um, um, oh, the whole grain um, corn muffin. So whole grain corn muffin only uses a half a cup of applesauce, but I buy the big organic jars of it. What do I do with it? Apple, apple juice. What do I do with it? Because I don't drink juices that way. Well, I found these and actually they were, recommended by Tammy of Nutmeg Notebook um, on one of her shows. And that was the other one that I began to talk about. There's Chef AJ, there's Tammy at Nutmeg Notebook. The cooking classes they do are fantastic. Uh, one of the things that Chef AJ is known for is helping people lose weight. But the other thing she's known for is having done 500 interviews since March 20th of 2020. Soon as we were shut down from the pandemic, she began doing interviews one to three a day and she never stopped. Um, and she's up to five something. I've been interviewed with her twice. She interviewed Dr. Pandit. It's one of the best interviews. I didn't know what was in Dr. Pandit's head. And it was wonderful how she brought out all her great ideas. She's interviewed Dr. Dysinger. So you can find those things on YouTube. Well, I saw her talk about this on one of her shows. These are silicone. The brand is Super Cube, C O, uh, sorry, S O U P E R Cubes. On, and there's a couple. Each of these are um, reversible. In other words, I can push out something that's frozen 
This one holds and is marked for a cup or a half a cup. This one for a half a cup or a quarter of a cup. And there's a two cup one, etc. Well, I make my date paste and I fill in. I don't need a, um, well, a half a cup is just perfect for my little jars. And I usually don't use more than that at any given time. So I just fill what is not used that day in here, put it in the freezer um, or fill these, put it in the freezer and then squeeze them out, put a little uh, wax paper around them and put them into a Ziploc baggie in the freezer. So I've got date paste that I can put right into a jar. The same thing with applesauce, the same thing with apple juice. That's how I got all of these things that I'm using for these recipes without having to buy the big jars and because I already have them in the freezer. Okay, let's talk about the salad. Let's talk about the chopped salad. And I think our pie is finished. Oh, yes. Okay. It looks a lot like when it went in, but it's more crispy. Isn't that nice? Okay. I'm going to let it sit right here and cool. All right. I learned from both Chef AJ and Tammy at Nutmeg Notebook about chopped salads. They use them all the time. One of the, their favorite product is this Holland bowl that's made from one piece of wood. I bought it and my initials were even inscribed on the bottom of it. And this is a mezzaluna knife. They do chopped salads. They throw their greens in here, chop them in this bowl. And this is what they do every day to chop their salads. I bought the bowl. I used it a couple of times, but I don't know why. I find it just as convenient to use this. Now, I'm not cutting a chopped salad for two people, two big salad bowls, and that might be the difference. I give my husband a small amount because he likes his avocado sandwiches for lunch, and then the other one is mine. So I'm going to show you how I make a chopped salad, and again, what goes into it. Let me get my greens first. In my chopped salad, and if you look at the recipe that I gave you, I recommend that you put a number of what I call the dry ingredients, the things that won't get, um, that, that are so moist that they start to go bad very quickly, especially when mixed with other things. Um, like for example, cucumber, I wouldn't put cucumber in, but I would put things like carrot, uh, these greens that you're going to see. And one of the things that I recommend that you could do is to have the one gallon uh, and even two gallon Ziploc bags or a container, a rigid container. And there are Ziploc brand rigid containers that hold nine cups. And that's one of the things that Tammy and her husband do. And they pull it out and that makes their salad because I'll fill this bowl. This bowl is, um, what is it? A four quart bowl. Uh, what is that? 16 cups. I'll fill it about two thirds full and chop it down to a fraction of that. And I'll eat all of that. Most of us wouldn't take a bowl this full and make a salad out of it. You put, have your salad bowl, you put a little bit of lettuce that looks full and you think you're done. If you do a chopped salad, you're getting a massive amount of some of the most important nutrients, phytochemicals, phytonutrients, um, the, the antioxidants that feed your body. So let's talk about what I would put in. And again, I could have had these all mixed but it's easy for me just to have these in my refrigerator and pull out what I need. This is shredded kale and you can buy organic shredded kale easily or you could um, grow your own. It's easy enough to pull the stem off of kale, shred it because it's such a hearty green, it will last shredded in your refrigerator for a long time. I use an herb salad mix that has a lot of purple leaves, the more color 
you can get into your diet, the better every color, even of the same food, but every different color, like orange carrots, yellow carrots, purple carrots, they all have a different phytonutrient, phytochemical profile. I put some spinach in there. Spinach is super green. And one of the things that makes the calcium available in spinach, bioavailable, is citrus, well, or an acidic dressing. We've got citrus in all of our dressings, and that's where the lemon and the lime come in. This is one of my favorite flavors. This is arugula. So I'll put in some arugula. I'll throw in some shredded carrot. And you can either buy microgreens. These are $3 at TJ's. TJ's happens to be three minutes from my home. So if you're thinking, gosh, does she live there? No, it's just easier to shop there than to go to a market that's so big it takes 10 minutes to go from one end of it to the other. And I'm adding the microgreens and these are radish greens and broccoli greens. And the microgreens are really nutritious, highly nutritious, more so than even the grown vegetable. And then I'll learn what do with the salad. Now, one of the things that you could do, make your own microgreens or your own actually um, sprouted greens. I've got these already started and they will turn into this. See? These is that these are cut off at the root. My own are sprouted. And so they even have the sprouted seed in them, which is highly nourishing and the entire little plant. So throw in some of this as well. Tim, my husband loves these in the sandwich. They're crunchy. Okay. Now I've got a pretty big bowl here. Watch this. Now this is something I could use a mezzaluna knife. I like this little guy. This was given to me when I was 15 years old by somebody else. And I found that they're available on Amazon, which I think is really interesting considering how old I am. Uh, man, I still not remember his name. It was a friend of my father's who used to come and visit um, when I lived at his art gallery. His name was Niels Boggy. He was uh, Danish. And he said he loved this to make egg salad. Well, I don't make egg salad. And um, to cut up potatoes for a potato salad because it chops through things. Well, I roll my wrist and as I do it, I just pull the bottom of the salad up. And you see what's happening here? All of that is blending. Oh, forgot one of my favorite flavors, favorite, favorite. And not only is it a favorite flavor, but this is massively nutritious. And that is, oh, I'll just dump the whole thing in, that shredded red cabbage. Now, all of this could have been mixed already in a baggie and I could have just pulled out the baggie and then done in one or two scoops, well, probably three, what you saw me do from each bag and just put the already mixed greens in. Whatever it would take to have you do this, I recommend keeping it simple for you in whatever way you can. So I'm turning as I go. This chops so easily. I can't have it on that side and do it. Otherwise, I think I'd show you a little bit more easily. But it's not quite done. But what's happened is I have little bits of red cabbage and carrot and kale and arugula and spinach and what is that, herb greens, mixed in in such a fine mix that when you take a bite, you're getting all of those flavors at once. I, I feel that it tastes better than any salad I've ever had. And my husband, who thought this was an odd way to serve a salad, now has admitted that he sees the difference that the chopped salad makes and he loves his little chopped salad with his avocado sandwich. Okay, I think in the recipe I said you cut it, you will reduce its size by a third. 
I said that wrong. I should have said to a third, actually a quarter to a third of its size. There's my salad. Okay, now wash your hands. All right, let's talk about bowls. How do I serve it? I could serve it in a bowl like this, but I think that's too small. That wouldn't give me nearly as much as I want with the rounded bottom. I have this larger, deeper bowl. This one's from Nautica and this would work, but this is the one that I like to use. It's flat bottom, sided, and it's big, it's nine inches, a little more than nine inches. Put in my salad. Flatten it out. I'll save a little of this. And then? Yes. Everybody wants to know the name of the cutter you were using. Oh, thank you for saying that. Okay. It is, where is it? The brand is Quick Cut, K W I K K U T. And I found it on Amazon and it's like $11.95, something like that. The one that I got from Niels Boggy is a little bit heavier because I bought a couple of these to give to my son, to give to my husband's daughters, um, because I think they're wonderful. And the ones that are available now, I think are a lighter weight and they're mainly aluminum. This one is stainless steel, but it still works just as well. So quick cut, K-W-I-K-K-U-T. And inexpensive. This bowl is an anchor hawking bowl that holds about 16 cups. And um, I wouldn't cut in metal and I wouldn't never cut in plastic or I would end up with bits of plastic in my food. You don't want that. This, but to chop in a bowl that's narrow and deep like this, it's just, it's perfect. All right, so I'm gonna save this for tomorrow. There's my salad base. Now let's see how we build the thing. All right. I wrote a description that looks like I was writing a term paper <laughs> to explain to you how I do all of this. But it, it, it's mainly a conversation about your protein sources, recommendations for different protein sources. I love to push the water out of um, a block of tofu. Um, I have a little device that does it. I used to simply put two plates together, fill my teapot with water and put my teapot on top of the plate. It did it just fine. And then uh, cut the um, tofu into some cubes, put it on a nonstick pan on a medium heat and just turn the cubes a couple of times. It gives them a brown skin, throw in a little bit of tamari and it bubbles up and then kind of mix them. And um, you end up with a very nice uh, kind of a, it's like, it's, I don't want to say meaty because I don't want to encourage that, but it is, it's like eating little pieces of tamari which is like a soy sauce flavored um, meat bits. You can put that on your salad. You can use beans on your salad. You can use high protein grains like quinoa. I have a recipe that I just posted. No, it'll be posted tomorrow or the next day on my website and on my YouTube channel, which you can access easily with my, to, uh, from my website. And it's a quinoa, it's, it's from... Tammy of Nat Nutmeg Notebook, beanwa. It's beans, corn, and a quinoa mixture that you cook in your Instant Pot. And you can do, I've done tacos with it. That's great on here as well. It's kind of similar to what I'm doing. But let me show you how I would make this. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna scoop some of this up. And you don't have to go through all these gyrations, but I do it because for, well, a couple of decades, I was a landscape designer and I can't help but wanting to design plants in one way or another. So I'm gonna scoop this in, give yourself about three quarters of a cup of your bean mixture 
um, protein sources so that you get a nice amount of protein. Turn it over and there. All right. Now, ooh, sorry. I just peeled and cubed a Kent, K E N T mango. Find Kent mangoes, they are amazing. Uh, there's a store by me called The Plant Man. I'm in Riverside. And if you live in Riverside or nearby, look for, you can just go online and find The Plant Man. And they bring in, they bring in fruits and vegetables from downtown LA into this little tiny shop. And um, they have some of the best things. And I went in there and he had the Kent mango. He said, oh man, you've got to get this. Because I wander through there almost like a swap meet. Like, what am I gonna find today? And sometimes the prices are just ridiculously good. And if you live in Riverside or nearby, I also recommend Corona Family Farms for beautiful produce picked from the fields, fresh every day. And they do not spray. They're not organic because they haven't paid for that certification. So I've got mango here. Does that sound strange? Well, there's always a fruit in my salads. And then I have a carrot pineapple salad. And this is on my website. It's Nan's carrot and pineapple salad with carrots and coconut and nuts and raisins and pineapple. And it's just delicious. Add some of that. So you go in your refrigerator and you look for things. When we had our family here a few days ago, I peeled a, um, oh, here, a jicama. And with jicama, you sprinkle it with lime juice and then sprinkle it with um, uh, chili, chili powder. And I had some left, so I'm going to put some of the... Um, Hikama. Hikama is a wonderful resistant starch. The resistant starch feeds certain bacteria in your gut, your microbiome, uh, and they love it. Uh, once a week, I, in my Instant Pot, cook uh, potatoes. And this is just a purple skin or a, yeah, purple skin potato. It could have been a Yukon gold. And this potato, when thinly sliced and put in the air fryer, crisps up and it's wonderful. I use this also for my husband's favorite salad dressing, which is the ranch dressing made with mashed potato, a half a cup of mashed potato and a bunch of other ingredients. And it's, I think, just like a ranch dressing that was so popular this weekend. And you'll see that on my website. This one is my favorite dressing. And that is Chef AJ's, um, what she calls house dressing. You'll see it on my website, Chef AJ's house dressing. And so we have the ranch dressing, my husband's favorite. You'll see it looks a lot. Let me see if you can see that. It looks a lot like a ranch dressing. Oh, and what's the base? Potato and plant milk. So I always use the soy. And so it has protein as well as um, uh, no fat. None of these have any added oils. I won't say there's no fat because this one, for example, has tahini and tahini is a fat. I can sprinkle on some radish. One of the things I almost always do is add sugar snap peas. And I buy them in a bag, again, Trader Joe's, but again, I, well, I don't know what they had a lot at a lot of the other markets because I don't bother going to the bigger markets, but the sugar snap peas that Trader Joe's has that are organic are meant to steam in the bag. I wanna recommend you never do that. You don't want to steam, cook, heat uh, foods in plastic. The plastic starts to degrade, that's what plastic does. And you get elements of this, these um, chemicals uh, that are that plastics are made of, and you don't want to do that. Well, these sugar snap peas are organic and they're pre-washed. So you open the bag, and without having to do anything more, I cut them into thin little slices. That way I don't even care if they have the little string in them. And they have protein, they have fiber, they're very sweet and delicious and wonderful in this kind of a salad. 
And then to me, the thing that brings me back every day, because this is my salad every day, but different things on top of it are these little potatoes. Usually I get the huge ones, but they're not, um, they're not in stores and the large that they are in the winter time right now. These are Frida Stokes purple sweet potatoes. If I couldn't do this, I would probably just do the white sweet, the Japanese sweet potatoes, which are purple on outside and white inside. But this is the, the um, purple sweet potato and look at what they look like inside. Now I said, every different color has different phytonutrients well, these have the, the um, anthocyanins that blueberries have. They're, the darker your color, the richer the nutritional profile is going to be. And I will always, as long as I have these baked, because I bake them once a week, just like I do with the white potatoes, I'll always have these in my salad. And from time to time, show you another thing. I'll do this with them. I make my own hummus and it is a whole food plant-based hummus and it's a roasted red pepper hummus and it's on my website. It's delicious and very nutritious and awfully pretty. <laughs> and being a designer, I can't help myself. I love the drama of the orange hummus with the purple sweet potato there. There you go. So what else could I put on a salad? I could put tomato. Tomatoes now are out in the markets at the Caroni family farms. They have tables full of the, the um, conventional tomatoes, the beef steak, if you want to call them that. And um, the cherry tomatoes and the heirloom tomatoes. When Tim came home tonight, I had a, a soup ready for him. We actually eat soup in the summer. We love soups in the summer. And I had some carrot salad for him and a, a, some of the jicama. And normally, almost every day, I'll do a tomato salad where I'll cut this into bits, add cucumber, Kalamata olive, um, basil, fresh basil, and um, a little bit of salt and then balsamic vinegar, the reduced balsamic vinegar. You can get the California balsamic and you can get Napa Naturals. They're 4% acidity and they're sort of a reduced, well, not sort of, a, they're a reduced vinegar. Well, a little bit of that, no oil, a little bit of that over a tomato. That's what he went, he came and said, could you do this for me? And I was kind of in a hurry, but I did it. And um, that's one of his favorite salads. So I'm gonna remind you of the simplicity of tomato. Um, if I didn't have all of this ready, I could have just taken a piece of apple and cubed that and put it in the salad. Little bits of apple in your salad are fantastic. And then the way this is eaten is I sort of push things around and I go for the greens. I get a lot of greens First, I sort of make pockets of space, eat the greens as I'm putting just a little bit of dressing on it. I don't mix the dressing in. You use way too much dressing that way. I find it better just to drizzle the dressing over. Again, Chef AJ's um, house dressing. This is the um, ranch dressing on my website and our brand new dressing, which is the lemon and basil dressing, put just little bits of it, or you can also, let me see where the Napa Naturals is, here it is. You can get this at almost any Sorry, this, Napa Naturals balsamic vinegar, Grand Reserve, 4% acidity, and it's thick. It's really thick. Well, let me show you. Well, you can't really see, but see that? It's like a glaze, no sugar added. And so again, whole food, plant-based, some people will simply put some vinegar on their salad. I like my dressings, but I kind of do both. So 
that would be our main dish. I get a lot of the greens, eat a bunch of the greens out. And then I, at one point, mix the whole thing together and just continue to add dressing as I'm eating it, little bits at a time. These I'll usually pick up and simply eat in one bite. Let's take a look at the apple pie. All right. Um, <laughs> Hi, Tim. Hi, Nanny. <laughs> no. Almost. You want some apple pie? Can I have it? No, thank you. It's delicious, though. It is. Okay. Sorry, guys. All right. So we have this look at. The, oh, I don't know that I've ever done a class and not ended up with something on the floor, but mm, okay, the apples are perfect. Get some of the crumble on top and then stop up here. Here's the ice cream. or as I call it, nice cream. Look, see it's firmed up. And come on, I'm not gonna eat all this, but I want it to look pretty there. And what are we eating here? We're eating apples, oatmeal, bananas, A variety, multiple colors, and that's what we want, the colors of the rainbow, protein. We have food for all week long that we can use for tacos or on top of a salad, just a regular salad. And you have possibilities for a number of dressings. Why did I put the radishes out? Because I think that they're not fully appreciated. They're even though they're white and they look like white inside and they look like something that is not particularly nutritious, they're a very nutritious food because that bitterness our body loves. Um, certain elements in our body respond well to the bitterness of bitter greens, for example, like arugula, and bitter foods like radishes. Okay, do we have any questions? Yes, so somebody asked, um, what brand of non-fortified nutritional yeast do you use? Oh, okay. Yeah, and I, I, I hate to go into that whole long song and dance about it, but I don't have anything else to show you. And so I have to show you this one. This one is Food Alive. I've gone online and bought some on Amazon. This one I get from Clark's, which is a nearby store like, um, like Sprouts or we don't have a Whole Foods bias, so I don't have anything like that. But this is the one I use and it's nothing but um, dry yeast, but nutritional yeast, and which is very different than brewer's yeast. This is different. But if you aren't sensitive to folic acid, then buy the fortified because the fortified has a lot of the B vitamins in it. And it's really highly nutritious and it's a lot less expensive than this. This is more expensive, although it doesn't have the fortification added. Uh, any you? other questions? And, you? and yes, if anybody is wondering if I eat all of this, absolutely. This is my lunch every day and it's this amount every day. Um, and I, I, I can't help but attribute my resilience and my um, lack of any kind of illness that would have haunted me several times a year. I mean, let's face it, we get flus, we get colds, we get runny noses. I haven't had anything. It's been almost three years plant-based. I haven't had anything. And I believe that all these greens, all this color, all this fiber, the proper proteins and no saturated fats from animal um, and the, the 
antibiotics that they're given and the, the pesticides that are in their foods. I just believe all of this makes a difference. Okay, you were gonna say, were you yes. gonna Did you wash and dry the basil leaves um, before you put them in the dress, made, put them in oh, the dressing? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. I just had them right here, thank you. Man? I pulled them off from my plant and I washed them. Man? Yes. Uh, Man, uh, please mention your book. Oh, thank you. Boy, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, Nan Simonson, in um, the middle of 2020, July, I decided I was going to write a book about aging powerfully because I was about to turn 70. I was six months away from turning 70 and feeling better and being stronger than I'd ever felt or been. And I attribute it to lifestyle medicines, four pillars of health, as well as a whole food plant-based diet. And I believe that any of us can choose to age and live with power. A lot of people who are younger, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, they don't even wanna think about aging. I, I understand that. When you're at 70, you think of it, but instead of turning 70 and thinking, oh boy, here it goes, the next shoe's gonna drop. I turned 70, I thought, you know what? I'm soaring. I'm looking forward to the next 20 or 30 years. And we can do that as they do in the blue zones if we live like they do in the blue zones. And that is with lifestyle as medicine and mainly plant-based nutrition. Thank you, Barry. <laughs> so Aging Powerfully is available on Amazon. And it's a story about, it's a memoir to a degree. It's a story about some younger years and a uh, eating disorder I had for 55 years. And then it is 10 lifestyle modalities spelled out um, in sort of a reference guide to help us get and stay healthy for decades. Anything else? Yes, somebody asked, is the plant man store that you recommended the same as the fruit man store? Oh, it is the fruit man. Thank you very much. Another error. Yes, I call him the plant man because he has everything. Um, but yes, on his signs, it does say fruit man. Yep, that's him. And what type of um, potatoes or sweet potatoes? The mine is the Frida Stokes, and those are organic. And I get all of my potatoes organic for the same reason. And you might think, well, Nan, they're not, they're not on, I mean, over ground. They're not going to be sprayed. But the fertilizers that they use in conventional, uh, uh, conventional uh, plant growing are all, all artificial fertilizers, and they use all kinds of chemicals in them. So. If you can get potatoes for 50 cents more for three pounds of organic, why not do that? So I have the Yukon gold and then I had the purple potatoes. And sometimes they're that big and sometimes they're as big as what you saw. And I just steam them all and they're in the refrigerator all week long. We just pull them out daily. Oh, a really cool way to do the, the smaller ones is just to mash them and put them in your oven at 450 or in the air fryer and they crisp up like crazy, don't use any oil. And then you can serve, uh, oh gosh, a vegetarian chili over them with um, uh, tofu sour cream. You can find that recipe on my website. That's just like sour cream and maybe steamed broccoli and it's a great meal. Anybody else? And the different colors in the salad, can they also be different fruits? Oh, yes. And that's why I wrote that page at the, the introduction, well here, the introduction to my chopped salad. I mean, again, it looks like I'm writing a book report, but I break it up into the protein options. And on my website, I have a curried tofu, raisin and almond salad, things like this. And then this one that we were talking about, but you'll see those on the website but also raw and cooked fruits and vegetables of all kinds and starchy vegetables like the potatoes. Um, and then whatever leftovers you have in your, in your refrigerator. But what I find that people really gravitate to is their favorite dressing. My husband loves his ranch dressing. And when I run out, I make more because that gets him to eat his little chopped salad with 
with you know enthusiasm because the dressing helps with that. I happen to like this one, Chef AJ's, because it's very pungent. It has a lot of nutritional yeast and tamari and tahini and lemon, and it's it just kind of wakes you up. But his oldest daughter, when she tasted this, insisted on the recipe, and that's today's, which is the basil lemon dressing um, with the bean base, which really surprised her. So, yeah, the the salad dressings and this, if you could get in the habit of having one big salad a day, you're doing yourself such a good favor. Anything else? That is it. Thank you very much, Nan. Well, thank you all for being on. I very much appreciate it. And I want to welcome you. If you are part of Dr. Deal's program, Barry was saying that um, he had invited uh, the group on and I, I, I can't really see who's on because it's, it's, you know, it's uh, across the room, but I'm glad that um, it looks like we've got a screen full of people and I'm just delighted about that. So welcome all of you and come back. <laughs> Have a good evening, people, because I know I'm going to.